From the High Definition Production Center of Troy University's Broadcast and Digital Network and Troy campuses around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. We're glad you've joined us for this look at what's happening around Troy University. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. For two weeks every summer, Troy University becomes the place to learn the language of Chinese in the state of Alabama. Students from all over the country come to Troy to take part in the Star Talk Camp. Nathaniel Rodriguez gives us the details. Troy University's Star Talk Chinese Language Summer Camp kicked off Tuesday with an opening ceremony. Star Talk is a language camp aimed at educating teacher and student participants about Chinese language and culture. The program started in 2006 uh, after, uh, during the uh, Bush administration time, uh, teaching students and teachers to teach and learn what is called a critical need languages uh, for the United States. For the next 15 days, participants will learn language skills in three to four hour classroom sessions. And they also be learning a lot of, uh, um, we call them cultural activities, uh, dancing with the dragon, uh, the lion dance, the fan dance, uh, and the uh, umbrella dance, and, and the other activities, uh, recitations of the Chinese poems, singing, and so on. The participants are split between 12 teacher participants and 24 student participants. In Star Talk's past, the students were mostly local, but now the program has decided to switch it up a little. Now we think about half of half, half in the states, half from outside the states is the best uh, match. So we are, we are going to keep that proportion uh, for quite some time. In addition to being an educational tool for students interested in Chinese language and culture, Star Talk also has the added effect of improving Troy's reputation as Alabama's international university. We're very proud of the fact that uh, we consistently have been able and selected to host this uh, Star Talk program, and uh, because it, it really does uh, bring a lot of students who otherwise may never have seen Troy University, and as we know, uh, to, to see it is to love it. After the ceremony, the group took a short break to their dorms before beginning their first class. Nathaniel Rodriguez, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Some of Troy University's incoming freshmen got their first taste of college life this week as the first of the summer impact orientation started on Monday. Paige Weeks gives us a look at what the incoming Trojans experienced. Monday morning, incoming freshman students gathered together in Troy University's Trojan Center to begin the first session of IMPACT 2017. Through different activities, speakers, and tours, students get an opportunity to have a first-hand experience of Troy. IMPACT is a, kind of a lot of students' first opportunity to really see what Troy is all about, gives them a chance to meet both incoming and current students so they'll know, you know what's all they can get involved in, who to meet, uh, all, things like that. And then it's a place for them to get scheduled for classes and you know get all, all the technical information as well. During impact students are able to visit Troy's different departments, have their student IDs and fall schedules made, learn about all of the different organizations that are on campus, and make their very first college friendships. Whether impact is a student's very first time stepping foot here on Troy University's campus or they visited here multiple times, either way it's their very first steps on what is sure to be one of their greatest adventures here at Troy University. And although impact can be scary for incoming students, one of the impact leader's top goals are to get to know each of the students and help them feel as comfortable and welcome as possible here at Troy. It gives us a chance to joke around with them, make them smile. Um, I definitely try and make them laugh as much as possible because yes, college is serious. Yes, it can be difficult, but it's the time of your life. This is the peak of so many people's lives is in college and they remember their college days. So I want to help them get the most out of it. Each impact session lasts two days and while students are here, they are able to spend the night in the dorms, go to Camp Butter and Egg, and choose between seeing a movie, visiting Fraternity Row, or just staying in at the dorm. Paige Weeks, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Last week, visiting middle and high school students sharpened their band skills at the Sound of the South Music Leadership Camp. On Friday, the students wrapped things up with a concert in Sartain Hall. Nathaniel Rodriguez has the story. After a week of practicing, the Sound of the South Music Leadership Summer Camp ended Friday afternoon with a concert performed in Sartain Hall. The concert featured a concert band comprised of a variety of students from different schools and ages, along with different performances by the individual camps. The ensembles performed different pieces such as Shake It Off by Taylor Swift, as well as the world premiere of a piece written by senior advisor Justin McCall. 
I've been working with the, the band, and the band is performing a piece I wrote for the summer camp band called Legion. It's a world premiere. They've, they're just opening it up. Uh, we're going to open the concert with it, actually, so uh, I'm really excited to hear it. According to McCall, being able to perform in a concert like this is beneficial to the students. If you're in seventh grade, you're getting to play some music that you may not get to play, you know, until you're maybe 11th or 12th grade. So you're getting a higher musical experience for someone that might be younger. And uh, you just get a, a chance to meet, you know, some staff members that can give you some really helpful insight and take back home. One volunteer said the experience was enjoyable for the visiting students as well as the Troy students. You know, the students were really great this year. Uh, they, it was a really good bunch of kids, and uh, they, they had a really fun time, and I had a lot of fun, and uh, especially a lot of the Troy students, uh, those of us in the Sound of the South leadership that were all helping out. In addition to a performance, awards were also given out to students such as the most spirited camper and the student who could do the most calf raises. Nathaniel Rodriguez, Troy Trojan Vision News. We'll take a short break, but when we return, we'll see a few more campers who visited campus this week. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're ready to have an awesome time, I'm ready, so let's party for the night. If you're ready to have an awesome time, I'm ready, so let us party for the night. We've been hanging on for quite some time. It's gonna be a very long night. So now I feel right If you're ready to let us party for the night Hey, if you want to be a part of something vibrant, active, and exciting to do every day at Troy University, maybe you should be a part of Troy Trojan Vision News. If you somehow haven't heard, Trojan Vision News is Troy University's student-produced, student-run, daily television newscast. Want to be on television? You can do that here. Want to meet people and tell their stories? We've got that. Want to be a part of a team that puts on a live, fast-paced television program three times a day? We have that, too. Already doing stuff with video and you want to learn more? We can help you out. If you're a broadcast journalism student, you really need to be involved with Trojan Vision. Like, really need to be involved. Your future depends on it. You don't even have to be a broadcast student. There's a pretty high cool factor in doing this stuff. A lot of our predecessors even met their wives or husbands here, so the social possibilities are pretty extensive. Not to mention Trojan Vision graduates who work all over the country for places like CNN, NBC News, The Weather Channel, and the NFL network. Anyway, speaking of famous graduates, we're graduating in like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, we've got jobs and internships to get to. And somebody has to replace us at this news desk. Why not you? Visit the studios on the first floor of Wallace Hall. Track down this guy, Aaron Taylor, and he'll hook you up. If you're interested in television news, and if you're a student enrolled on Troy University's Troy campus, you qualify to get involved at Troy Trojan Vision. See Aaron Taylor, Production Coordinator, 141 Lorraine B. Wallace Hall. Now back to Troy Trojan Vision News Weekly. The Trojan baseball team wrapped up their season a month ago. However, Riddle Pace Field has been filled with activity this week. Only the players are a little younger than the Trojans that usually take the field there. Sarah Drake tells us why. It was a rainy day out at Riddle Pace Field on Wednesday where the Trojan baseball team wrapped up its three-day summer youth camp. And the weather did not stop the kids from coming out to have fun. It's a great time for us as coaches to connect with the young guys. Uh, this age group is more about having fun and doing a little baseball stuff. And then the afternoon group, we try to teach a little bit more. And while the rain may not be ideal for a baseball camp that's supposed to be held outside, Coach Smart talks about how it's not stopping these kids from learning. Yesterday we were forced to come in because it never stopped raining. Uh, so we did some work in the cage, we did some work in the building and talking over some things and underneath our stadium. And then this morning, thankfully, it stopped raining, so they got to play on the field a little bit. But now that the rain came back in, so we'll do the best we can. Mainly, we just try to keep them active. Coach Smart also talked about what it means to see his players come out and interact with the kids. I love that. Uh, we've got several guys involved. Our coaches are involved, but it's fun for the players. And I think the kids like the players more than the coaches because they're younger and they have more fun with them. But I think it's great interaction for our kids to see uh, uh, a chance to help young people learn more about baseball and enjoy it. Uh, that's a next step for these kids because as they get older, they need to be able to help younger people, and this is a way to start that process. And I 
asked one kid what his favorite part about camp was, and his answer was simple. Everything. Coach Smart said he hopes to see some of these campers as future Trojan baseball players one day. Sarah Drake, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The City of Troy's Recreation Center offers residents a variety of recreational options. However, one of its most popular attractions, especially for walkers and joggers, is getting an update. Kawana Clark gives us a look. Troy Parks and Recreation will be undergoing a major upgrade to its walking trail in the coming weeks. According to Director Dan Smith, the trail is popular amongst Troy residents. At the Recreation Center, we have currently a paved walking trail that's 1.1 mile, and from early in the morning at sunrise until uh, dark. It is heavily used. The addition of this walking trail is going to make the trail approximately two miles and it adds configurations the way it all ties in together will be three loops that are all tied in together. The city of Troy isn't solely funding the extended walking trail. A recreational grant is also helping finance the project. The total project is $125,000 but we received a uh, recreation trails program RTP grant of $100,000 and the city will pay the remaining balance which is approximately $25,000. It is another step in the growth of our facilities. According to Smith, the addition to the walking trail will add an additional one mile to the 1.1 mile course. However, with recent rainfall, it could cause a delay. It potentially could be through uh, in one week, but uh, realistically with the, with the weather and the rain, it could take uh, a week and a half to two weeks, but they move very fast when they work. So no matter if you're walking on two legs or four, Smith encourages Troy residents to come out and enjoy the facility's walking trail. Kawana Clark, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Troy University's actors and artists in training more than likely take classes in the Wallace D. Malone Jr. Hall of Fine Arts. And if you've seen the building, you'll know that compared with many other buildings on campus that have undergone renovations, the outside of Malone doesn't have that same modern updated look. But as Seth Hawk shows us, there's a hidden gem just beyond those walls. The Wallace D. Malone Junior Hall of Fine Arts is a building that has been the academic home for numerous art and theater majors. But the building itself has not always been a place for the arts. It used to be a physical plant. Uh, prior to 83, um, the administration building, there was a place called Kilby Hall, and that's where the art department was. So when they tore Kilby Hall down, they refurbished uh, the physical plant uh, and that's when Malone Hall was created. Now Malone Hall is a building that isn't as aesthetically pleasing to the eye on the outside as some of the other buildings on campus, but where I'm standing right now is the Malone Hall Courtyard, which holds a dear place to many students that take classes in Malone. I think the courtyard is a real secret to people. People don't realize we have a courtyard, which the students utilize a great deal. They have um, cookouts there, they have exhibits. When I think of Malone, I think of the courtyard and what a family we've become because of that location. The Malone Courtyard not only shows off student artwork, but it also hosts big crowds every year. Every year we do uh, Trojan Art Day in February and we bring in students, from high school students, and we host over 400 students in that courtyard. Malone Hall is the definition of inner beauty, as the outside may not look all that great, but the inside is flourishing with art and culture. Seth Hawk, Troy, Trojan Vision News. We're going to take another quick break, but when we come back, we'll meet some of the people that make up the fabric of Troy University. Their stories are coming up right after this. Oh, emojis! I thought the conversation just got dumber. Ugh, internet trolls, just ignore them. I like you just the way you are. I believe in you! She's a hugger. Give her a squeeze. <laughs> Help up the hand. Ah, there you go. Thanks, mate.
I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work. Show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60. Two over 50. One over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. Now back to Troy Trojan Vision News Weekly. There are a variety of factors that go into making the decision of what to major in while in college. For some students, it's a lifelong dream, while some make their choice after they start school. Sarah Drake shows us how one student chose her major based off a major life event. Abby Birch is a senior biomedical science major from Dothan, Alabama. Upon graduating from Troy University, Birch plans to become a pediatric oncologist, and the reason why is personal. When I was 13, I got diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and so then I decided I wanted to be a doctor, and biomed's just the best way to get there. Birch also said that although she was shocked at first, she knew that God would be with her every step of the way. Little shocked, little overwhelmed, but I didn't feel hopeless or anything like that. I knew God was there for me. Birch says she knows just hearing the word cancer can be discouraging, but she has some advice for people who may find themselves in that seat. And just surround yourself with good people. Don't ever feel hopeless. Find a good doctor and just pray. And while some people get sick during their treatment, Birch said that she instead felt tired all the time. It was a year of lots and lots of medications, but most people assume that you're always throwing up or something like that. I only threw up a couple of times. I was only very sick once or twice, and but most of the time I was tired. I just didn't have a lot of energy. I lost all my hair, stuff like that. Birch said that one day she would like to work at UAB, which is the hospital that treated her. Sarah Drake, Troy, Trojan Vision News. All Troy University students have to take a core group of classes known as general studies in addition to the classes in their major. It's intended to be part of a well-rounded education. They're routinely taught by a variety of professors. However, as Paige Week shows us, there's one general studies class that is going to land students in front of only one man. Troy University offers a wide variety of on-campus classes for students to take and many different faculty members to teach those classes. However, if you're looking for a music appreciation class, you'll likely meet Samuel Frederick. He's a Troy University graduate and has worked at Troy since the fall of 1978. After graduating from Charles Henderson High School, Frederick came to Troy and majored in music. He is currently the only on-campus music appreciation professor at Troy. Dr. Long was, had been here a few years at that time and he uh, talked to me and recruited me. Uh, I had done well in high school, made the All-State Red Medal and uh, that was very impressive to him and he offered me a music scholarship. And although most current Troy University students may recognize Mr. Frederick as being a teacher here in the classroom, it turns out he's much more. After I had been here uh, probably about three years, he, uh, he himself started asking me to uh, stick around if he'd like me to stick around when I graduated and be his percussion instructor. One of Frederick's favorite memories of working with the Sound of the South goes back to the fall of 1992. 
Months before fall even came, he had began crafting what he knew would be the best percussion feature he would likely ever create. It's sort of like a coach knows he's going to have the best talent he's ever had and might be his only chance to win a national championship. So I just started dreaming of every possible thing I could do to get on the field that would sort of be a, a one of a year kind thing to remember for for the ages. Today, Frederick doesn't work with the Sound of the South anymore, but he does continue to watch the band and also still plays in his free time with groups such as the Montgomery Symphony Orchestra and the Montgomery Recreators Big Band. Paige Weeks, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Well, it's time for our last break, but when we return, we'll learn about Trojan Tour 2017 and how the athletic department is getting ready for the fall. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. This is Thomas. During the day, he works in research, and at night, he's a warrior. Soon, he'll have a degree from Troy University, a historic and affordable public university with flexible online and in-class courses, and professors who know their students by name. Do what you love and be great at it. That's the warrior spirit. Learn more at troy.edu slash working warrior. I'm only 17, but I know about investing. Believe in something, buy shares in it, watch it grow. So what if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. I could be one of the first college graduates from my family, the first philanthropist from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there's a second and a third. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney and I'm your dividend. King. Go fish! In your face, in your face. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Now back to Troy Trojan Vision News Weekly. Trojan Tour 2017 just wrapped up for the Troy Athletic Department and now they're starting to get ready for all of the fall sports. In this week's Trojan Talk, We'll hear from Troy Athletic Director Jeremy McLean about those preparations. Hello and welcome to Trojan Talk. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. Today we'll be talking a little Trojan athletics, and my guests today should know a thing or two about Trojan athletics. Director of athletics, Jeremy McLean. Jeremy, thanks for joining me here today. Always so, a pleasure to be here. Appreciate and, it. And uh, we've wrapped up the Trojan Tour 2017. Uh, obviously an opportunity to get out there and shake the hands of the Trojan fans across Alabama and Florida. Uh, First off, just kind of give me uh, your impressions of this year's Trojan Tour and what some of those uh, outlying fans are feeling about this upcoming uh, athletic fall athletic schedule. So. Yeah, Aaron, like you said, we had six stops along Trojan Tour this year, and, and really, I think, without a, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the best tour we've ever had. Uh, a lot of that, you know, we had a lot of success this year. It's been a fun year. Mm -hmm. People are excited. Uh, but I also think we, we were able to kind of change the format a little bit, make sure we – we were reaching out to the right people. So we had really good crowds at every stop. And it was a great opportunity. You know, it's, it's, it's an opportunity we take to, um, to talk about the, the past year, the bragging points, the, the success we've had, uh, to say thank you to our supporters, and then really to get people excited about what's coming up. And, and so that's really what's fun about it, I think, is looking forward a little bit. It's always fun to reminisce about, about the success, uh, but what is the most fun is looking forward to what can be uh, in 2017-18 uh, for Trojan Athletics. And of course, the, the opportunity to, to meet with those people on the road, and especially, I, I refer to it as outliers, but it's in these areas that are, it's Trojan territory, but it's not, those people aren't here right. 
in Troy and around it all the time. So I know it's got to be a good opportunity for you to to be able to to meet face to face with some of those fans and even maybe some more casual fans right. out there to kind of bring them into the fold a little bit more. Sure. So. Like you said, I mean, we're, we're coming to them on their turf, mm -hmm. which is what we want to do. Uh, we want to get into their communities and, and, uh, we, and we take our coaches with us, obviously. And so we have as many of our staff and coaches there as we possibly can and give people an opportunity to interact. And, you know, what I'll say about, about Troy is that we have a unique niche in the fact that we're playing at a high level, uh, the highest level possible in Division One athletics, FBS. And uh, we've got a great program. And our coaches are as accessible as any place you'll find in the country. So we go to these tours and our coaches are there visiting with our fans, mingling in the crowd, answering questions, having conversations. So that's really the fun part of it. And our coaches enjoy getting the opportunity to do that too. And of course, you know, fall's coming up uh, here probably quicker than we all think. And so football, obviously, a lot of excitement for football, and and there's a lot of reason to be excited about football. So and 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 I know that's probably one, probably one of the big topics that, that hit on Trojan Tour. So. Yeah, sure. I think I think everybody, especially in this part of the country, football is is kind of front and center, especially as you move into the fall. Um, no, so for us, coming off a 10 win season, mm -hmm. a bowl victory, um, and really having a great nucleus of our players back. Uh, being able to retain our entire coaching staff. So all those things point in a very positive direction. Uh, still a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. You still have to go out <laughs> and compete. So, uh, but it really bodes well, I think, for us to, to try to maintain and build on the momentum we have. You know, we've got about 98% of our, our offensive um, skill positions back, <laughs> position players back. And we lost some key offensive linemen. We lost some guys on defense. But um, we feel really good about where we're at. And, and, and our coaches have done an excellent job of keeping our guys focused. And, and, and that will be the, the objective moving into August as we prepare for uh, that opening game in September. And, of course, it, it, not just football. I know on the tour, uh, Phil and Chanda uh, hit a couple of those stops and talk about building the level of excitement that's a fall sport, even though you're talking, it's still a few months away, but right. basketball is a fall sport, starts in the fall. But I know a lot of fans were excited to, to get to see Phil and Chanda after the success they had this past yeah, year. Yeah, so. no, no doubt. I think our folks enjoyed that. I think our coaches enjoyed that. Um, you know, we're, we're the only program in the country – uh, to win a bowl game and then win men's and women's basketball conference championships. And so that was a, a great bragging point for us. And, and, and our basketball programs are in a good place. Uh, Shanda, um, on the women's side, we lost a lot of seniors, mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of key contributors. Uh, but her, she, she's really got a great recruiting class coming in, one she's really excited about. And then on the men's side, we, we obviously had a, a great run at the end, a lot of success. And uh, Phil really returns the nucleus yeah, of that yeah, team. That, that group is coming back, yeah. uh, the good chunk of that. So, And, and of course, uh, with some new coaches starting here in the fall as well. So an opportunity to see some, some new faces uh, coming here in the fall. And I know there's got to be a level of excitement for, for the new coaches to see uh, uh, volleyball and soccer, the new coaches take things over here in the fall. So. Yeah. Uh, Jed O'Connor, who's, who's taken over our soccer program, really hit the ground running uh, early in the spring semester. And, uh, had a great spring as far as um, effort and work and, and conditioning with our with our uh, student athletes there on the soccer side. And I know they're all looking forward to getting mm -hmm. back and getting started. And we're excited about what's going on there. And then on the volleyball side, Josh Lowers brought a great energy to the program and been recruiting really, really uh, hard. And and uh, he's got a lot of his student athletes here this summer, and they're getting extra work in. So really excited about what those two programs are are, are set up for moving forward. And of course. Uh, Fall uh, just around the corner. It, it, I know it doesn't seem like it, uh, but level of excitement uh, for for Trojan athletics, obviously, with Trojan Tour wrapping up and then moving on to the fall. Uh, and it's always good to have you here, Jeremy, to kind of talk about the the state of Trojan athletics to give us a little heads up on what's going on and what we can expect. So well, I appreciate for being here. that, and it's always fun when you're successful. It's even more fun <laughs> to talk about. Thank you. Well, if, if if it's not successful, we may not have you around as much. So uh, understood. So we're going to keep you coming, right? So, That's right. All right. Exactly. Well, thanks for joining us here today. So. Thank you. All right, and thank you for joining us on today's edition of Trojan Talk. And that's what happened on the third week of June 2017. To find out what's happening throughout the week, you can tune in to Troy Trojan Vision News at 5, 6.30, and 10.30, Monday through Thursday, or anytime by following us on Twitter at Troy TV News. Also, feel free to like our Troy Trojan Vision News fan page on Facebook to see links to online content from Troy Trojan Vision News. We hope you join us again next week for another edition of Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. Have a good week.